My name is Rob Breener and I'm a Professor of Organisational Psychology in the Department of Organisational Psychology, Birkbeck College. This presentation relates to the MSc in Organisational Psychology and the MSc in Human Resource Management. The question I'm addressing is, why feelings at work are important? It has often been suggested that employers pay too little attention to their employees' physical and psychological well-being. For financial reasons, managers may be more interested in making sure the work gets done than in the health of staff. Not all organisations take this approach and, over time, work conditions have improved for many, but certainly not all workers. Organisational psychologists have always been interested particularly in employees' psychological well-being. From an ethical perspective, employee feelings matter because they should. Employees should be treated decently and have the right to work in environments that will not harm their psychological well-being. From this perspective, it has also been argued that workers not only have the right to work safely, they also have the right to interesting and rewarding work. While such perspectives are important, equally interesting is the view that employee feelings matter because feelings affect behaviour. In turn, this behaviour affects not only individual work performance, but the performance of the employee's team and the whole organisation. Historically, two main ideas have dominated the way psychologists think about well-being at work, job stress and job satisfaction. Stress refers to the negative feelings individuals may experience in response to certain features of their jobs and satisfaction to the positive feelings. It has been widely assumed, both within the academic and more popular management literatures, that negative feelings have a negative impact on employee performance and positive feelings a positive effect. According to this reasoning, more satisfied employees are more likely to work harder, to perform better, to be absent from work less and so on. And conversely, more stressed workers are likely to perform less well. While there is a common sense appeal to this reasoning, the research evidence is not so straightforward. For decades, psychologists have debated what is called the happy productive worker hypothesis and questioned whether it really is the case that more satisfied workers are actually more productive. So why is the link between employee feelings and performance rather more complicated? The answer lies partly in the limitations of the concepts of both stress and satisfaction. While workers may feel generally unhappy or happy, they are more likely to be experiencing a range of more specific positive and negative emotions, such as excitement, anger, enthusiasm, sadness and so on. To the extent that there are links between feelings and performance, these will be clearer and stronger for specific kinds of emotion. Psychologists have also found that the links between feelings and performance depend a lot on what aspect of job performance is being considered. Although task performance on the core aspects of the job may not be strongly influenced by feelings, other aspects of performance, such as being flexible, helping colleagues at work, and being prepared to go that extra mile, have been found to relate to employee emotions and moods. Feelings at work matter because they should, and because they relate to employee behaviour and hence performance. While the concepts of both stress and satisfaction are too broad perhaps to be useful, the more recent focus on understanding how specific emotions and moods affect specific forms of employee behaviour promises to shed more light on the question of why feelings at work are important.